<laughs> Just reading Romans 15, we then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak <laughs> and not to please ourselves. <laughs> See, every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. Mm -hmm. For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, mm -hmm. the reproaches of them that reproach thee fell on me. <sighs> for whatsoever things are written aforetime were written for our learning, mm -hmm. that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. <laughs> Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another, <laughs> according to Christ Jesus, <laughs> that you may, uh -huh, with one mind and one mouth, glorify God, <laughs> even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not trying to please myself today, <laughs> police. But let's say I took the text messages of every person in law enforcement. Are the text messages of those in law enforcement, are they on the actual cell phone service? Yes. Are they on the 3G, 4G, or 5G? Yes. Or are they on the roaming? <laughs> now, I ought, we then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak. Yes. Not to please ourselves. <laughs> Let every one of us please his neighbor for the good to edification. Now, edification is really one of my favorite words. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. He who prays in an unknown tongue edifies himself. And I spent decades praying in an unknown tongue. Let me tell you what happened. Sure. I was living in Colville. Yes, I had moved up there to work on the Colville High School. Yeah. I got involved with a group of Nazarenes where I used to go to a Bible study. Yep. Well, they told me about a four square uh, event. Yes. That was there for young adults that were not married. Her Marks was one of the speakers at that event. Yeah. Well, he explained the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And when I was there, he said, uh, if you don't know how to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, just fake it until you faith it. Yes. Well, I went back to Colville with that Nazarene group of young adults that were unmarried. And I really wanted this. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, probably for the first six to 12 months, it sounded like total gibberish. It was like a baby language. You know how babies learn how to talk? Yes. They just start off with sounds. Yes. And then they learn one word, maybe mama or daddy. Yes. And then they learn please and maybe thank you. Or they learn milk or food or whatever the, the actual learning process of language is. Yes. Now, uh, my prayer language started off with just maybe a few syllables. Yes. And it took me years and years and years to get an actual language. <laughs> and then I studied a glossolalia. Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In fact, when I moved to Everett from Colville, yes, because I got a job at Wilder Construction, <laughs> I started going to Word of Truth. Yes. Now, this was probably in 1993 or 4. Yes, there was. And they had a special speaker there that was from Oregon. Yes. And he explained the edification of your spirit, man. Yes. Uh, because of the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues through you. <laughs> See, your mind is unfruitful because your spirit is praying in tongues. Yes. Well, I thought, well, I want this miraculous power of praying in tongues so that I can understand what God wants me to do. Yes, he does. So I really started studying the different doctrinal issues of praying in tongues. And then I started to do it an hour and then two hours and three hours. And then I do it all day long, every day. Oh. And then eventually I ended up going to Northwest College. That was an assembly of God school because the assembly of God's believe that when you pray in an unknown tongue, it's a spiritual language that is not the same as your actual spoken uh, native language. Yes. <laughs> now, having went five years, I got my associate's degree from an Assembly God school. Yes. And my bachelor's degree from an Assembly God school. <laughs> there was quite a bit about the speaking of tongues in the Assembly of God. Yes, there was. Now, I really embraced this whole idea of edifying myself. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
And I would just pray in tongues and pray and pray and pray. And then without my understanding of what I was praying, yes, certain things would happen. Oh, And then I would pray with my understanding because I understood what to pray. Yes. Now, eventually, <laughs> it worked out <laughs> that I got very good at speaking in tongues. Very good. Mm -hmm. And I thought there was some truth to it. Yes. Because there's this process of learning language where you start out as a baby Christian. Baby. <laughs> and then you mature in your faith until after maybe 25. I'm working on 30 years of actual committed to Jesus Christianity. <laughs> if I were to pray in tongues, I'd have to ask you, yes, um, do you have my tongue right now? Now, let's say, oh, for even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. For whatsoever things are written aforetime were written for our learning. Yeah, that we through patience and comfort of the scripture might have hope. Now the God yes, of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus. <laughs> now understanding this technology of being on one another, yes. <laughs> Give me the cell phone, yes, the text messages. <laughs> it would seem to me that every time he got texted, the B on you wanted to do whatever the B wanted, to, and you were obligated to be. Oh. <laughs> now, last night I was thinking, yes, when I was growing up, mm -hmm, I had seen a woman, yes, that my father was involved with, yes, put her hands on the chest hair of my father because I do have considerable amount of chest hair. And I thought if a woman was to put her hand in my hair of the hair of my chest, that's right. I could be in her mind, yes, when we are being together. Now, I would want to cause a certain amount of thought, yes, that would stimulate her sexuality to want to make love with me. Yes. Now, you know the largest organ of the actual uh, sexuality of people? Now, it happens to be the mind. <laughs> and there was this individual where her husband kept getting from this court right now. Now, why don't you get me the text messages and get me the identity of all of those that have been texting you? Oh. And then every time they had to be on you, yes. Mm -hmm. And then get me all of the arrests, the warrants, yes, and the I wanted rewards. Yes, he does. Now, let's say that you decided that texting was going to be 5G. Mm -hmm. It was going to run through the roaming. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, my thought is today, since I cannot receive phone calls, yes, I can't get any text messages. Right. And I provided my email addresses. Mm -hmm. I'm going to want my sons. And I want every text message of my wife, poop, and all of those in school districts. <laughs> because it looks like that your cell phone has been deciding right now. <laughs> now, we're organizing crime today. Yes, we are. I spent decades interceding in the spirit to edify my inner man. Yes, we did. So that I can understand the will of God. Boom! Now, let's say you're in organized crime. You're going to organize some crime today? Yes. I would say that to organize crime, you have to be able to communicate. See, I was watching a show last night. A large number of Italians were involved in different types of crime. Yes. 1930s, 40s, and 50s. And whenever I think about of Italian women that have very large breasts that are very Catholic, that should be nuns, but their eroticism prevented them from entering the convent, I start to think, oh, how could I be on them? <laughs> now, for all the Italians that thought, well, I'm Catholic, I'm going to want your cell phone numbers today, okay? <laughs> because I am going to go out. <laughs>